Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 19 of the Stained Glass Podcast. I am your host, Jessica Spurlock. On today's episode, I'll be speaking with wellness coach Carmen James about how God revealed the desire for a relationship with him through cancer. Let's get started. Burning the candle at both ends, totally burned out, not pouring into your own cup, juggling all the balls, so busy trying to hit the yardstick that the world raises for us on what it means to be successful. Does that sound familiar? My guest, Carmen James, is a certified health and wellness coach with 38 years experience in the industry. She's a wife and a mother of three and an entrepreneur, and she's passionate about helping women find balance in their lives and has helped hundreds of women write their own personal success stories. So Carmen, welcome to the Stained Glass Podcast. Thank you so much. What an honor and a privilege to be here. I am so excited to talk about this um, because it is something so near and dear to my heart. So thank you for the platform and uh, your generous heart. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Why don't you go ahead and tell us more about yourself? Absolutely. So when you mentioned I had been in the industry for 38 years, that is uh, spot on. I started out as a simply a group fitness instructor who just loved teaching aerobic classes. And then that evolved into getting certified as a personal trainer because I felt called to go to the next level. I felt called to not just deliver great workouts, but to begin to really connect with clients one-on-one. So that evolved into personal training. And from there, the business exploded. I um, had this dream that I would open my own boutique fitness studio as the dream materialized so did the stage three uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer diagnosis that would be the pivotal moment in my life that would change the trajectory of everything. I always feel the need full disclosure even when I'm talking with a prospective client um, you know the the cancer story is for lack of better words, still in play because it is an incurable, uh, the medical world says an incurable cancer. When it's a blood cancer, they can't do surgery. Therefore, uh, they tell you the best they can do is treat the disease uh, into remission, but they will never tell you that you are cancer free or you are cured. Of course. And so another fun fact that relates Carmen and I, we are both from the same area in Ohio. And when I joined a Facebook group, Ren Robbins, who was the guest on podcast in episode seven, suggested that I have Carmen come on the Stained Glass podcast and hear her God story. So you touched on that a little bit in your introduction. So why don't you go ahead and tell us more about that time in your life? Sure. So we can rewind back to the year 2017. My husband and I were on a long weekend away to our condo in Naples, Florida. And it was the day before we were to fly home. It was in January of that year. And I had come down with the flu in December. And I wasn't somebody who got sick a lot. Like I wasn't somebody who, you know, got the flu every year or battled colds or anything like that. Um, And for the most part, I, you know, I really felt like I was at that time taking really good care of myself. I mean, I was, I was working out, I had these boot camps, so I had plenty of exercise built in, you know, I would say I followed the 80 20 rule when it came to eating 80% of the time I tried to make really good choices that would fuel my body and 20% of the time, you know, I was like, if I want the cheesecake, I'm going to have it and I didn't worry about it. And so it was It was pretty shocking to me um, in December, going into that January trip, I got the flu for two weeks and I could not get rid of it. And it, it really, uh, it concerned me. I was like, this is so strange that my body's not fighting this off. 
And uh, we're on vacation. Day before we fly home, I reach across my stomach to grab a magazine that was laying on the chair beside me. And I felt a lump in, in my left lower stomach area. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wait, what is that? Um, I had been to my primary care physician six months prior. I'd had a physical exam, but no blood work. Mm. And um, I quickly grabbed my cell phone and I'm like, I, something in me is like, there's something wrong. So I Googled the female anatomy of the human body and there are no major organs where that particular growth was. And I could tell by pushing on it that it was sizable. And um, the next day, when the, the plane landed in Columbus, I went straight to urgent care. And um, within minutes was given the news that the person who did the physical exam, it was a female doctor, uh, informed me that she was confident that I had cancer. And, oh and I was in complete shock and denial. I was like, I, I, do you know what I do for a living? Right. You know, I, I'm a personal trainer because back then I, I, I didn't have my wellness uh, certification yet. And I'm like, I'm a personal trainer. I work out. I don't have cancer. I was in big time denial. Um, fast forward a couple of weeks later, um, I got the news that my primary doctor uh, had put me in the hospital. They did a biopsy on this tumor and we got the news on a Sunday night that it was indeed what the, the, they believed to be uh, lymphoma. But at that point, of course, they had not staged it. Um, so the referral was made for me to, to go to the James Cancer Hospital in Columbus, well known mm -hmm. throughout the country for the work that they do, especially in, in research and um, I remember on a Friday afternoon being the last patient on this particular oncologist schedule. And as she delivered the news that Mrs. James, I'm sorry to inform you, you have stage three uh, blood cancer. Mm -hmm. I just went to the ground. I mean, it leveled me, dropped me to my knees in, in ways you know, looking back, it, it I can talk about it now and not have the emotion that a, a couple of years ago I, I would just be sobbing because um, it was it was, you know, she said to me, we treat stage three the same as stage four. And when I heard that, I was like, I'm going to die. And I remember saying that over and over as I sat there sobbing, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. My husband was with me and I could not hear anything else that was being said in real time in that moment. To me, it was a death sentence. And, um, you know, at age 52, sure. <laughs> nobody's signing up for that. And um, so it took me a little while to get my head around it. And certainly, if I'm to be very honest, and I do want to be honest in hopes that it, it gives someone else hope. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they told me they believed the cancer had grown from my back forward. That's the reason it went undetected. And uh, due to the size of the tumor, they believed it had been growing for 10 years. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. And um, looking back, people always ask me, well, if you were so healthy, what happened? And And this is what is really fueled me in my now online wellness coaching program is that I better understand now than I ever did that self-care has to be non-negotiable and self-care ladies is not just workouts and what we put in our mouths. It, it truly is a holistic picture of the individual. And as I look back, yes, I was working out. Yes, I was for the most part eating right and drinking water. But I was not getting good quality sleep. I had insomnia, which should have been the first red flag because that was an indicator of stress. Uh, my stress was off the charts um, running my business and building it. 
I was truly chasing after the things of this world. I wanted the six figure income. I wanted to be the number one trainer in Licking County. I wanted all that, you know, all that goes with that. I wanted the applause. I wanted the recognition. I wanted what I really wanted below the surface without realizing was I wanted to be loved, I wanted to be valued, I wanted to be seen, and I wanted to be heard. And that's a big T trauma that goes clear back to my childhood. Mm -hmm. And so um, the cancer diagnosis, they told me my my best shot was aggressive chemo. They, they prepared me well that I would lose my hair, and I did. I lost all my hair by the second chemo. <laughs> I, I, and when I say all my hair, I'm not just talking about the hair on my head. I'm talking about I didn't have to shave my legs. I didn't have to shave my armpits. I didn't, I lost my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. I lost my hair. I was super sick, um, but God met me in all of that. And I worked through that cycle of anger, you know, the grieving of, of, of having everything taken away from me, literally, and dropped to my knees and not knowing, would I have an income? Could I hang on to my clients? Would I survive the chemo? Would I leave my husband and my children and my all of this behind? What, what was happening? I went through, I, I just shared this story with a client. I went through a 24 hour period where I literally banged my fists on the kitchen table. God, where are you? And how could you have forsaken me? And why this and why now? Because my dad had been diagnosed with cancer 12 years prior and our family had already walked out so much hell and I was very bitter at God very angry and in just a really tough place as a believer the enemy was coming for my faith he was coming for my relationship with God and wow 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 did God just really open my eyes to the truth about who he is and what true faith means absolutely and what a way to learn that too <laughs> Tough lesson. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So that was back in 2017, probably into 2018. And then obviously all of us went through 2020, <laughs> which uh, was the pandemic and everything. And I think uh, if I remember right, you were probably in remission by this time. Yes. So how did that affect your business? How did that affect your care and going forward with that? Oh, wow. Great, great question. Uh, when COVID hit, I was in the gym, personal training, and I remember that night leaving the gym and saying goodbye to my clients and being like, I, I don't know what I don't know what any of this means. I just know the gym is closing as of tonight. I, I don't know what's going to happen to my business. I, I, I don't know, because we've never lived COVID, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't, We knew so little. Um, but what I quickly, you know, as the events were unfolding on national television and, and on the internet, I quickly knew that God was sheltering me mm -hmm. uh, and protecting me in the space of remission and having um, a compromised immune system put me at greater risk and really um it was a blessing in disguise because my best friend uh danielle erdman god love her god gave me a beautiful gift in danielle he gave me this client who she thought she was hiring me to help her lose weight and and i saw it as you know the same transaction but god had such a bigger story for danielle and i and that business transaction that is is epic and mind-blowing but once again proves what a great uh, and good father he is. But Danielle, super tech savvy, and she came to me and said, L let's move your business online. And I'm like, I can't do that. Like these these people expect me to physically show up and train them and they can, you know, they can go on YouTube. They can get workouts for free. What do they need me for? Mm -hmm. And that's when it clicked. That's when God reminded me, hello. <laughs> You have a wellness certification. How about we put that in play and do something more than just give people workouts? And so that is when God 
through Danielle and I collectively birthed the Fit Souls program. And um, it's an eight pillar holistic wellness coaching program online that anybody can do from anywhere. Um, but it covers eight pillars. It covers workouts, water, how we fuel our bodies instead of feeding our emotions. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah, the quality of our sleep. You know, I talked about the insomnia being a red flag. Sure. Uh, stress management, because many of the women that come into my program operate under high levels of stress and they're not managing the stress. The stress is <laughs> managing them. Mm -hmm. um, looking at mindset, uh, the thoughts that, that, that we tell ourselves, the lies that we believe from the enemy, work-life, home-life balance, and then the eighth pillar, the one that is most near and dear to my heart that was never a part of my program as a personal trainer is the spiritual faith base because at the end of the day apart from god we are nothing and we have nothing right. and um you know god really opened my eyes to the ability to bring the faith-based spiritual component into play and while not all my clients um embrace that eighth pillar of the program they do know where i stand and all i can do is invite them to the living well you know i i can't draw the wet the, the water for them i can't make them drink the water mm -hmm. um, but i i love that we quickly created an online women's bible study group um that meets on monday nights it's an amazing um a small group of about 10 women and it's a judgment-free zone and we're all in different places in our journey with the lord but i love that we're able to get in the word of god and, and we've got some tremendous prayer warriors in there i've seen god move in the lives of some of those clients who didn't own a bible at the start of covid mm -hmm. um, I, I and Danielle purchased a bunch of Bibles um, and we gave those Bibles out during COVID to anyone who didn't have a Bible um, because people had more time on their hands back then. And, you know, mm -hmm. God shut the world down for a reason. And it was, in hindsight, the best thing for my business because number one, it's taken my program from just giving people great workouts to giving people an ability to have the right tools and the right coaching to build a healthier lifestyle so that you get to show up as the best wife, the best mom, the best sister, neighbor, whatever you, you fill in the blank. But I am passionate about helping women in that chasing after what's the next diet, what's the next shot, the next pill, the next drink, the next band aid that I can slap on it to make myself feel better because ultimately God sent his son to the cross for you and I to live an abundant life. But an abundant life is not one where we're a slave to the things of this world, whether it was like me, where you've got your priorities upside down and God's like, okay, well, I see that you've decided to make an idol out of a six figure income in your business. And I, I didn't send my son to the cross for you to work seven days a week and miss church and not be in the word and not spending time with with me i want a relationship with you i don't want you dependent on having six figures or having x number of clients or having what the world tells you is going to bring you joy and make you happy and fulfill you because none of those things will and at the end of the day god can take them all away absolutely all the way if we learn nothing about covid we should have at least learned that and so i want to be the one that shows you there's a different path forward and and i want to be the one that that you know shows you that many of us have had trauma big t trauma little t trauma you know whether it started in our childhood or it materialized later in life you know there are things like abuse and divorce and miscarriages and job losses and you know, loss of loved ones and things that just happen to us that, you know, God wants to meet us in that. He wants to heal us. He wants to change us. And oftentimes the things I see 
in my coaching world are when people have an addiction to food or alcohol or retail therapy or whatever, binging Netflix, it's because we've learned a way to soothe and self-medicate and numb out from the things that truly are not bringing us joy. Truly, when you look at some of the celebrities who have everything, they have money and cars and boats and they can travel and they got wardrobes and pocketbooks and all the things, how many of those people though do we later learn they're miserable, they're empty, they're unhappy because they don't have God at the center of it all. And God taught me that in 2017. He said, look, my friend, my child, you've got it all wrong. You've got it upside down. Your priorities are out of alignment. And I want to bring you back into alignment and relationship with me. And the only way I can do that is to strip these things away. And as we, you and I walk out this cancer journey, it's not punishment. Mm -hmm. It's, I love you. I want more for you. I want you to have a free and abundant life. And I want you to be able to help other women get free of the things that enslave them, that the enemy is using to keep them trapped and unhappy. And, And that's what I'm on fire about. Absolutely. I can tell uh, even it comes through this podcast that you have such a passion for all of that. And also the Lord, I believe that he is sovereign and he probably saw that you had all this upside down and he put cancer in your life to be able to teach you these things. So that way you can plant seeds in other people, other women, and be like, hey, don't do this be better, (laughs) you know, get it, get it not upside down. So I know that you said that this is not a one and done diagnosis. You know, you're cured. It's, it's ongoing. You're, you're in remission, I believe. And so, um, how are you doing today? How is it going? Yeah, great question. I was just at the oncologist. I go every six months. Um, I don't know if your listeners are aware, but Uh, It used to be, you know, back when my dad was diagnosed, if you got to year five, then you, they moved you to only coming back once a year. And because cancer has really sadly exploded, um, they are no longer really operating under that protocol. I mean, I get every oncologist is different, but where I go in Columbus, the protocol is, it doesn't matter. I'm in year six of remission and um, yes, praise God. Absolutely. Um, and, and I go, I still go every six months. They, they draw my blood and when what they're looking for is there's something called an, um, LDH inflammation marker. Yeah, and in that they're able to see, and a normal person is going to be somewhere between the number one and 190. A person who has cancer will be over 190. And just to put it into perspective, when I was diagnosed in 2017, my marker was over 500. Wow. And um, that's when they know if we don't do something quickly, she will be dead. I mean, I probably had I chosen to get off that plane, ignore that what was going on within six months, I would have been dead. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's, that's hard to take. I mean, my daughter, just for scope, the reason why the oncologist came in to see us as a surprise was that her LDH number was in the 400s. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, I think praise the Lord that it wasn't cancer, but yeah, that's, that's the whole reason why they came into the room to start talking about leukemia. And we were like, why are you here? <laughs> and, Cause we had no idea that that, that was uh, an issue. So glad to hear that you are maintaining your remission. Yeah, that's amazing great. news. Praise great. the Lord for that, for sure. Mm-hmm. So I know you spoke a lot about trying to flip the pyramid around as far as what you spend your time and your resources yeah. and your energy on, but but is there any other, like, what's the biggest lesson you learned from this experience? One of the biggest lessons I learned was I had spent a lifetime in church, but going to church, 
that is one thing and truly living a Christian life is another thing. Plenty of people go to church on Sunday, but Monday to Saturday, you you would have no clue, right? Yeah. Um, and, and it really opened my eyes to, you know, you can check all the boxes and look, anybody can quote scripture about faith. Anybody can get up and sing the worship songs about faith, but how quickly um, that all comes crashing down when you sit across that oncologist and, and you get that stage three diagnosis, you know, where's your faith in that moment when you're speaking the words of death by saying, I'm going to die. God really opened my eyes to the fact that I didn't have a good definition of faith. I could sing about it. I could quote scripture. I had grown up and, and lived my life in the church. And I'm thankful for a, a father who, a good Christian father who made going to church a priority. And on Sunday said, the car's getting out of the driveway, get your butt in the car. It was not one of those things where I could just lay in bed and go, hey, I don't want to go to church today. You know, yeah. Those kids. <laughs> yeah not an option. Yeah. Yeah, my dad made it a non-negotiable. And while I might have resented it, and I know I did in high school, of course I did. What high school kid wants to get out of it and go to church? You know, I wasn't on fire for the Lord. I didn't have a real relationship with the Lord. That's what he taught me. I went to church and I thought it was that, oh, if I go to church and I pay my tithe and I read my Bible and I can quote scripture, well, we're good. <laughs> well, no, we're not good mm -hmm. because Monday to Saturday, my life was bearing no fruit. My life was looking no different than a non-believer's life. You know, I, I did a lot of things. And, you know, I was just sharing with a client this morning on a one-on-one -on -one accountability call. I said, you know, we have to be very careful putting Christians on pedestals and looking at them like, well, they have Jesus and, you know, they're a Christian and they're perfect. We're not perfect. We're all broken vessels. We're all a work in progress. We're all here for a reason, right? And that reason is is to not only know the Lord and 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 put God as number one in our lives, you know, and love Him with with all of our heart, mind, and soul, right? But but what does the Bible say? We're to love one another. We're here to love. We're here to serve. It isn't. I was just reading this. I, I'm doing going through a beautiful Bible study right now from well-watered women called, I think it's called Refined, and it's about your identity in Christ. And let me just say something. I got to give a shout out to Heather Burns. Um, Heather Burns is a business coach. She's a Christian and, and I, I just love Heather. Um, I was on a call with Heather yesterday and you know, she's the one who encouraged me to go back and revisit my identity in Christ. And I, at first I was like, oh, I've been in church all my life. I know, I know my identity in Christ. But as I've been going through this Bible study, it's really uh, been a great refresher, a great reminder, a great thing to just re-solidify in my mind. But he, in the study, Gretchen Saffles talks about, um, the fact that we are ambassadors and i've never really used that word i've never really thought about how i'm an ambassador and when i go out into the world whether it's at the starbucks drive through shopping in target getting my nails done whatever whatever it is that i'm doing i'm a representative of the king of kings and the lord of lords and the way I speak, the way I act, the way I engage with people or don't engage with people speaks volumes. And I just feel like I still have so much to learn and he's got so much work to still do within me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a beautiful thing just to think about ourselves as that piece of pottery that's on the potter's wheel every day. He's shaping, he's molding, he's changing. He's placing people in our lives, people like you. You know, when you crossed 
Now I follow your stuff. I listen to your podcast and I'm thankful that God put you in my life. I'm thankful for your podcast. I'm thankful for your ministry. I'm thankful for Heather. I'm thankful for well-watered women because there are so many tools and so much amazingness out there to help all of us on the journey. But just remembering, we're not the main character of this story. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, I'm Carmen James, and this is my story. But geez, at the end of the day, it's not about Carmen James. Mm -hmm. It's about the Lord. It's it's about his story, his worth, his value, his kingdom. And I'm just the vessel here to be used to love and serve others well. Yeah, an ambassador for Jesus. And it's it's totally his story. It's God's masterpiece, this yeah. stained glass masterpiece or pottery masterpiece, whichever illustration you prefer. <laughs> but the uh and God, I think, uses trials to teach us something about himself. Uh, is there a particular aspect about God that he was trying to, to show you through cancer? Oh, absolutely. I th I, I, the biggest thing I think he has shown me, and, and, and Heather and I talked about this yesterday, he's a good father, whether we're in the valley or we're on the mountaintop. He, he's good. He's good whether I make six figures or I don't. And I don't right now. I did when I had my studio, when I was killing it, when I was chasing after the things of the world. I thought I was blessed and he was all that, right? Mm -hmm. And then get that diagnosis. And I look at where my business is right now and the rebuilding I've had to do since COVID. I certainly don't make six figures. But my circumstances don't define who he is. He is still the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He's a good, he's a great father. And, and I'm just reminded of that verse. That he works all things for our good. It's for our good and his glory. And people say, but how can cancer be for your good? It has marked me and changed me forever because had that not happened, I'd probably still be out there chasing after the things of the world and checking the boxes and believing, oh yeah, well, I go to church, I pay my tithe, I read my Bible. I had no relationship, mm -hmm. no relationship, and it starts there. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned that scripture, but uh, was there any other scripture that helped carry you through the experience? The scripture that uh, I first put up on my wall here in the sunroom is a, is a little uh, plaque and it's Esther 414 and it's summarized. Perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. I, I remember that. someone giving me that scripture verse uh, when I got the diagnosis and I've never forgotten it. But I really wanna cl uh, close out and, and read this verse that Heather gave to me um, when we first met. She felt like God had laid this on her heart. It's um, Isaiah 58, 11, and I am born in the month of November, so the number 11. And 58 is uh, how old I will be on my birthday this year. And I wanna share this. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Carmen in Hebrew means garden or orchard of God. When you flip my name backwards, take the letters of my name, flip it backwards. In Hebrew, Nemrak, N-E-M-R-A-C, Carmen backwards means undefeated. Praise wow. God. I love that. I do too. <laughs> That's amazing how God kind of knew your story and and maybe that you would be named Carmen and that just sort of fits your ministry and it fits your personality like so well. Thank you. If you could go back to 2017 or even 2016 Carmen and mm -hmm. give yourself some advice, uh, what would it be? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> you need to get your priorities back in line. God first, family second, work third. Mm -hmm. I had upside down. It was work was number one. Family was 
sort of out there. I, you know, I put, I, I've told my clients this, sadly, I put my marriage on the line. I put the relationship of my children on the line. Here were gifts from God that I took for granted. And sadly, time passed and opportunities passed and opportunities to make memories passed. And that was damaging for my marriage. It was damaging for the relationships of my three children. And you can't get that back. Yeah. And then recognizing that God was last place again, you know, it, I was one of those people, like so many people I encounter that come into my tribe, you know, I, I knew about God, I believed in God, I could slap a Bible verse here and there, but you know, I wasn't in relationship, but the only relationship I had with God was, oh, my wrist's on fire, time to pray, time to get a bunch of people to pray for me. And, um, you know, I would say to that individual, um, you got to get your priorities in line. He's a good God. And when we look at the Ten Commandments, we can see those as, you know, suffocating and punishment. And, oh, you know, we got to live by these legalistic rules. We got to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth of the matter is he's given us these boundaries as a loving, caring father who wants the best for us. And he knew that if I stayed on the path that I was on, the enemy was going to steal, he was going to kill, and he was going to destroy me. And um, it, it's just, you know, when you put God, God first, you, yeah, you might not make six figures and you might not have all the things, but you know what, Jesus, I don't, I'm not certain he made six figures when he was here and he didn't have a, you know, he didn't have a Range Rover and live in a million dollar home and have, you know, 20 Kate Spade purses and whatever. Mm -hmm. He was, he, he lived very simple and so did his disciples. In fact, when he called them to follow him, what did he say? You know, go sell all your possessions, get rid of your things. Mm -hmm. Because we are called to remember, this is not our home. We're just sojourners. We're just passing through. This is going to be a blip on the radar. And unfortunately, I was holding too tightly to the things of the world and things and people. And, and we're called as ambassadors to live with a loose grip of the things of this world, because someday they're just not even going to compare. They are not even going to compare. Absolutely. I mean, I'm guilty of that myself, honestly, trying to hold too tightly to things and, and people. And we started going to a, a different church and they put a lot of emphasis on catechisms. And the first catechism question from the Westminster Catechism is, I'll paraphrase it, it's basically, what is your purpose? in this world. And yeah. the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And you can't enjoy something even for a little bit if you don't have a relationship with them. And yes. in learning that it's all God that has all the control and everything. And it's not all on us, like our salvation. It's not on us. It's not what Jessica can do or Carmen can do or whoever. Okay. It's what Jesus has done. And what God sees when we go to him one day is not us. Us, not the fitness coaching and the six figures and everything like that and or the podcast he sees right. what christ did for right. us and that's all that matters absolutely for anyone else who is in love with your passion like me where can you be found online yeah sure thank you for asking um on instagram at carmen c-a-r-m-e-n carmen james fitness uh, on Facebook, I have a free Facebook group for anyone who's interested. It's called Dare to be Healthy and Happy. Um, and you're welcome to join that group. I go live in there bi-weekly. I do some education. I get recipes. We have challenges. I do have, um, you know, special events throughout the year. Uh, in addition to that, I have uh, my personal, I usually post a lot on my personal Facebook wall, so you can always send me a friend request. 
at Carmen Alvis, A-L-V-I-S, uh, James. Alvis was my maiden name. And then um, I have, of course, my private Facebook group for my coaching clients because I want to create a safe space where, you know, what's shared inside that group stays inside that group. And that is my Fit Souls program. And uh, also on my website, uh, CarmenJamesFitness.com on the home page. There's a link to a pr prospective client questionnaire. If you are even remotely interested in what I have to offer in online wellness coaching, again, you can do it from anywhere. I have people out in California in a different time zone who are in the program. Um, because it's all online, you know, we're not hindered by location, but you can complete that form and I'll reach out to you and we'll schedule a 30 minute free uh, consultation or discovery call where I get to learn more about you. You get to learn more about me. You can ask any questions. I'm certain I'll have questions for you. And then we decide, is this a good fit? Is the Fit Souls program the right next step for you? For some people it is and for others it's not. But you know, here's what I tell people, no harm, no foul. You're not out anything other than the few minutes that it takes you to complete the prospective client form, um, I'm going to give you my time for 30 minutes and just see there's no pressure. I'm not going to twist your arm and, and force you into something. I want clients who want to do the work and it's hard work. And as as Heather likes to say, it's holy work. It is very holy work. And I'm honored that God would give me um, the gifts the resources and this uh, assignment uh, while I'm here on planet Earth. Yeah, and I'm praising him for all of that as well, because you are definitely a light uh, in a dark world for sure. So I have enjoyed talking to you, Carmen, uh, for this last bit of time that we've been chatting together and really appreciate you taking the time to come on the Stained Glass podcast. Thank you. Thank you. You you have such a big heart and a generous heart. I just pray God will bless you in amazing ways. Thank you so much. Would you feel comfortable closing our podcast in prayer? I would be honored. Heavenly Father, oh wow, we come before your throne today. We are ever grateful for this beautiful day that you have given us, for the fact that you chose to breathe your life into us, to give us breath, to wake us up, to call us to another day. Lord, I thank you for Jessica. I thank you for her podcast and her ministry and the work that you are doing in and through her. And today I am the recipient, the beneficiary, as are all of the listeners. And I just pray that you will bless the listeners, that you will speak to the hearts of whoever tunes in. Uh, may they hear from you in the conversation. Apart from you, we are nothing and we have nothing. We may think so when we look at our bank accounts or when we look at the titles or the cars or the homes or the vacations or the whatevers, the things of this world. We might believe in the moment that we have it all, but man, it's not worth losing our souls. It's not worth it. So I just pray if there's someone out there who doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, may they come to know you either by reaching out to me or reaching out to Jessica or reaching out to someone. Oh, Lord, we realize our days, they are numbered. And the time that we have, it's going to pass. It's, it, it's passing quickly. Oh, but may we steward the gift of this day and every day that you breathe into us well. May our conversations, may the meditations of our hearts, may they honor and glorify you. Again, I thank you and I praise you for my own remission, my own story, my own ministry. Without you, it's nothing. So we thank you and we praise you for the, this gift of time today. And again, for Jessica and her heart and for opening this door. May blessings upon blessings unfold. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we give you all the glory because you are worthy. All the thanks because you deserve it. And may we praise you. Amen. Amen.
So with this in mind, I would like for you to think of a difficult circumstance in your life, one where God may or may not have revealed to you the purpose for that circumstance. If you would like to share that with me, I would love to hear from you. I can read that story on the podcast if you'd like to remain anonymous, or just like Carmen, you can even come on the Stained Glass podcast as a guest if you feel the Lord's leading. Your story, though it may seem broken, can reveal God's glory just by sharing it with someone else who needs to hear it. You can message me that story on social media. You can find me on Instagram or on threads at the Stained Glass Podcast and on Facebook in the Stained Glass Podcast group. You can also email me at the Stained Glass Podcast at gmail.com. In the next episode, we'll uncover some biblical truths and how they can be applied to your life just for your encouragement. It drops in two weeks. Until then, this has been Jessica Spurlock with the Stained Glass Podcast. Go be a blessing.